بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد أي لحبة في الله continuing on our study of encouraging harmony and wisdom and da'wah and warning from discord by Sheikh Rabi' bin Hadi al Madkhali Hafiz Allah Taala and we left off the Sheikh was mentioning about the importance of being hasty in warning and attacking one uh, people and not having wisdom and knowledge in giving da'wah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and not to be impatient with one another and that we should be tolerant and give and show gentleness in giving da'wah if we want to present a, 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 a picture which is in accordance with the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and you want to be on the correct madhab and minhaj in your da'wah. The Shaykh said, after mentioning the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, make things easy and do not make things difficult and give good tidings and do not chase the people away. <coughs> He said, O oh brothers, these people are unaware, for by Allah, if they were aware, it would be incumbent upon them to call the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam himself a Mumayyah, and the Sahaba, and the scholars of this Ummah, based upon this destructive harshness that destroyed the Salafi Dawah. They would have had to have called the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam himself, who called to wisdom patience, kindness, and softness, they would have had to have called him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam a mumayyah wa iyadhan billah. I seek Allah's forgiveness. By Allah, they did not mean this, and it is not their intention, but they are unaware. So it is upon them to understand what is built upon these rulings. So it's imperative to have knowledge before you give da'wah, to have wisdom, have some tarbiyah, to learn uh, and, and, and know, and even your common sense, you don't just throw that out the, the window on how to treat people, other human beings, even those of us who were not Muslim before, that in, in our jahiliyyah, in our time before Islam, you know, a lot of these principles were applicable. They're common sense principles. Talk to people with respect. Be kind and gentle to, to people if you want them to take good, take something from you. But if you want to deter the people, if you want confrontation, if you want to fight with people, then of course, then you step to them in an incorrect, in a violent, in a hostile way. But if you're calling people to the deen of Allah Azza wa Jal, then you want, the, you want to come to them with kindness and gentleness. Show them the tolerance, show them the patience, show them the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He said, by Allah we write. We give advice, we debate, we call the people to Allah, and they consider us mumayyah. Why? Because they hear us say wisdom, softness, kindness, and we say this now because we saw that harshness destroyed the Salafi Dawah and tore apart its people. So what are we supposed to do, my brothers? If we see a fire, what are we supposed to do? Pour gasoline onto it so that it gets bigger? Or are we to get something that will put it out? May Allah bless you. So I have to, and this is wajib uh, upon me. And I have been saying this before today. When I saw this destruction, this calamity, I had to say, brothers, have softness. Now this harshness has turned the, towards the people of the sunnah themselves, meaning the Ahl sunnah is splitting, fighting, and attacking one another. Look at all over. All over you find it. We have this issue in, in all over America. We have it in all over in, in, in the UK. We have it in France. We have it in uh, Indonesia. We have it in Ethiopia. And I've seen some of this myself with my own eyes in places like Ethiopia and Indonesia. Well, Lamistan, he says, I had to say, brothers have softness. Now this harshness has turned towards the people of the Sunnah themselves. They left off the Dawah of, uh, they left off the people of Bid'ah, and they turned to the people of the Sunnah with this destructive harshness, which contains oppression and all types of false rules. billah. So you fall into a Bid'ah. Harshness will lead you to a Bid'ah. And you see it all the time. We know many brothers who have a love for the Sunnah. But they're so harsh and so severe that they fall into mistakes and sometimes bid'ah. They're saying everyone's hizbi, 
but those fingers are coming back to them. They're pointing with this finger, Hisby, but the three uh, other, the remaining fingers are pointing right back at them. Because they fall into that. You're not with us. You didn't take our position. You, uh, you're not following the scholars. This is their claims. How many people have we heard? Just recently, an individual was supposedly not even advising me. They don't even have knowledge, but they were attacking me, saying, you, you're not taking from the scholars. And I said, subhanAllah, what are you talking about? For one, you didn't even tell me whatever mistake it was that I made, because if I did, then I will correct it. Number two, then you claim me not follow the scholars. So then I had to list, not for the sake of building myself up, but list where the scholars that I took my knowledge from. And that I still take knowledge from. You don't take from the scholars. These are these are cliches. These are frame. These are statements. And and really cliches. And those cliches are very dangerous because behind it sometimes is his bia. I'm not saying always, but sometimes behind it is his bia because they want you to take from their three people. They want you to sit with their clique. Why don't you take from the 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 the, the uh, well-known du'at and they count six of them for you. Are you telling me there's only six du'at that are well-known between the UK and America? What is this? What kind of da'wah is that? There are many, I know countless brothers who graduated from Jemma Salamiyya. I know countless brothers who came out of Yemen and brothers who studied in Egypt and stuff. You're telling me only six remained on the da'wah and that if we don't agree with those six, the da'wah's over? No. That's batil, up till batil. That's the most false fault. You got to take from him. You got to listen to him. His lecture is the only right. No, that's false. We judge as as Sheikh Rabi says, and way before him. As but this is where I first heard the statement from. Would mentioning a statement of the Salaf. La yuraf al haq, yuraf al haq. La yaraf al haq bi rijal, walakin yaraf al rijal bil haq. Okay, ma qal. I messed up the statement, but anyway, what it means is that the truth is not known by men, but the men are known by the truth. Meaning that it's not that some, even our scholars that we love are always on the truth. They don't make mistakes in every fatwa. You know, so what do you do when two mashaykh from Ahl Sunnah, they disagree? You have to, if you are favored to have studied and you have some tools, then you'll be able to look, if you have enough knowledge to, to, with the issue that they disagreed on, to be able to hopefully discern truth from falsehood or who is more correct in their view. Meaning that going back to the statement of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Kullu ibn Adam khata wa khayran khata ayina tawabun All the children of Adam make mistakes But the best of those who make mistakes are those who repent So all of us make mistakes All of us have sins And we don't know the haqq I can't say Shaykh Salim bin Fuzan said and that's like wahi That's not revelation He's an alam, rubbani And I trust taking my religion from this alam but that doesn't mean every single view, every single opinion that he makes is correct, that he never has made a mistake, or that he won't make a mistake in the future. That's not, that's not what the Salafi Dawah is. That's not what the Deen of Allah is. Because the Prophet ﷺ already told you, we have a Nas that says every one of us makes mistakes. So how is you going to blind follow and say that I have to blind follow or this one has to blind follow a few people who are way less in knowledge, who have no knowledge compared to these great Imams, who studied under some of those Imams, maybe. No, don't force the people. Be gentle and kind. Teach the people and gain ilm. So that way you can discern haq from battle. So you have some way to practice your religion with some sort of comfort, not with confusion. This one said this, this one says you're running to the left, you're running to the right. May Allah forgive us and forgive me for in any way getting off topic. The Shaykh then said, Hafidhullah Ta'ala, so beware. Beware of following this way that will destroy you. The Salafi Dawah and its people. Call to Allah with all that you are able to, with proofs, with evidences, wherever you go. Say Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala said, the message of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, and after that we use the sayings of the Imams of Guidance to help you in your Dawah. 
those whom both the people of the Sunnah and the people of Bid'ah consider to be Imams. So I advise the brothers in Africa and the brothers in Turkey or wherever, say Allah said, say the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, then say Imam so and so said, look at this, he's giving you that minhaj, call Allah, call a Rasul, call Imam Shafi, call Imam Malik, call Imam Abu Hanifa, call Imam Ahmed, Naam. But we start, the essence is the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet And then we look to those Imams, how their statements in, are in agreement in accordance with that evidence from the Kitab or Sunnah, if we have the ability to do so. Then say Imam so and so said, and take an Imam who they respect. If you are in Africa, say Ibn Abdul Barr said, say Imam Malik said, so and so said and refute their incorrect beliefs with the sayings of these Imams. So this is uh, some of the ways for the Du'at when they are having to refute people or they, are, they, they should refute them with their own Imams that they respect. If you're dealing with people who follow Imam Abu Hanifa, blind follow him, then you show that their Aqidah is not in accordance with Imam Abu Hanifa and show these statements of Imam Abu Hanifa which illustrate that what his, his Aqidah was, was a Kitab or Sunnah. And refute those incorrect beliefs with the sayings of these Imams because when you say Allah Tabarakatala said, the message of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Imam Malik said, and so and so said, they will accept this from you and they will listen to you. This is wisdom. And this is the wisdom the Shaykh is, il is illustrating and, and highlighting for us. But if you come to them alone by yourself and you speak from your own self, then who are you? No one will accept this from you. Your da'wah will not be accepted. I Meaning the people won't accept from you. They won't accept from you if you come and you try to correct them. And if, you know, if it's void of wisdom, have the wisdom, have the ilm in the fiqh. And ilm in the fiqh means that you understand what the aqwal of the ulama, you understand their differences and you can come to the people in their, basically their own tongue or their own madhab, how they understand and direct them to kitab al-sunnah. After the book of Allah and the sunnah of the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you have to use the sayings of the scholars that have high status with the people to help you in your da'wah. Scholars that they cannot say anything negative about. Bukhari, for example, they respect him. Even the Sufis respect him everywhere. Bukhari and Muslim in their books, and Imam Ahmed ibn Hanbal, and uh, Al-Uzai, and Sufyan al-Thawri, and Sufyan ibn Ayyina, uh, Ayyina, and so on and so on. These, uh, there are ties between us and them. Scholars that we both consider to be trustworthy, unlike the Shia, who we have nothing in common with. So we use these windows of opportunity. This is from wisdom, brothers. Do not say, Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah said, because they do not want to hear this. They will not listen to you. Mention Ibn Taymiyyah amongst the Salafis, those who respect him. You do not say Ibn Taymiyyah or Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab amongst the people of innovation, because you will chase them away. This is what Shaykh Rabi is saying. So this is excellent advice for us to understand to how to, this is the hikmah of da'wah, because many people, they do not bless with this hikmah, this wisdom. Amongst the people of innovation, because this will chase them away. Mention to them the imams who they respect, because their leaders have spoiled the reputation of Ibn Taymiyyah, and they have spoiled the reputation of Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab. as they have spoiled the repu reputation of the rest of the Imams of the Salafi Dawah. So you do not come to them through this through that door. It is not from wisdom. Rather you say Imam Malik said, Sufyan Athori said, al Zai, Bukhari, and Al Muslim said, they will accept this from you. And if they accept this from you, later they will know the truth and they will respect Ibn Taymiyyah and know the truth about him. They will respect Muhammad Ibn Abdul Wahhab and know the truth about him and so, so on and so forth. This is the way that we follow to call the people to the religion of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah wa ta'ala says, And do not insult those they invoke other than Allah, lest they insult Allah in enmity without knowledge. Look at this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is showing and showing us the hikmah that we need even with the mushrikeen. That means even when you deal with Jews and Christians and, and, and pa pa people who, and pagans that worship idols and people who worship statues or Hindus or Sikhs, that you should have a type of wisdom, that you should not insult who, their deities. If you go to the Sikhs and you say, that guy you have that picture on, uh, a picture of, uh, you know, with the, 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 the knife, 
that this guy is a mushrik and a kafir and he's this and he's this and you insult him. What do you think they're going to say about Allah? What do you think about they're going to say about the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? And then what do you do? Then what do you do? Likewise, you don't go insulting even the Christians, that you have a type of respect. Not that you respect their falsehood, no. But you have a respect for them because you don't want them to insult Al-Haq, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You don't want them to insult the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So out of your love for Allah and your love for the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you should avoid this. Likewise, you should not insult, as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned, someone, for example, if you get in an argument with someone, you insult their father. They love their father. Their father could be a very bad person. But if you insult their father, they're going to insult your father. And that's the wisdom behind it. And that wisdom has to be, cannot be forgotten in Dawah. It must be applied in Dawah. <laughs> and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct was from Allah Azza wa Jalla. Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the Shaitan. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with Amal Nafiyah, wa Rizqan Tayyibah, wa Amal Al-Mutaqabbila. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Nabiya Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.